Hello friends, in this video, I shall talk to you about diagnosis making of a common clinical problem in females, which is bladder outflow obstruction. Let me first talk to you about the pathophysiological basis of a female bladder outflow obstruction and female lower urinary tract symptoms. The female lower urinary tract symptoms can either belong to the storage phase of urinary bladder which are known as storage symptoms and in this we include frequency, urgency, nocturia, incontinence and the bladder pain which patients experience in suprapubic area or sometimes in the genital area. The other set of symptoms are called voiding symptoms which include straining while passing urine, noticing thinning of the urinary stream or noticing decrease in the uh, force of the urinary stream which is known as slow stream or intermittency of the stream or in some patients terminal dribbling and even pain while passing urine, the dysuria. There are third set of symptoms which are called post void symptoms and in this some patients experience incomplete voiding and some patients notice post micturitional dribble. So friends if you look at this slide you will appreciate that there are three phases of low urinary tract symptoms. So first when you take a history and you talk to the patient, learn to categorize her symptoms into these three blocks. Now when you have a patient who has these low urinary tract symptoms, these symptoms can happen because the low urinary tract itself is at fault. There is some disease in low urinary tract because of which these symptoms are taking place. But then there are patients where the low urinary tract is not at fault yet they have symptoms. When patients have a demonstrable disease in the low urinary tract to account for their LUTS, we use this word female voiding dysfunction. But let me talk to you for a while about having low urinary tract symptoms without low urinary tract being at fault. Here you should first remember three neighbors of the low urinary tract which is the lower ureter, the uterus and vagina and the rectum. So there are three neighbors and in each of them there is one common disease in ureter, the stone in the lower ureter, uterus, vaginitis, rectum, constipation. So remember friends these three neighbors and these three common ailments of these neighbors which can present to you as low urinary tract symptoms. Then you should remember three distant relatives of the urinary bladder and this arrangement. First is pancreas, second is brain and third is spinal cord. The pancreas can influence bladder through diabetes. The spinal cord can influence the functioning of bladder as well as the rectum and the brain can influence the functioning of all these three brain, uterus as well as the rectum. So if you remember about these three neighbors and three distant relatives of the low urinary tract, they can be having some disorder and they can be presenting as low urinary tract symptoms. So the first responsibility as a urologist is to rule out that there is no disease elsewhere which is masquerading through the low urinary tract. Having done so, you move to the actual group which is the low urinary tract is at fault and therefore the low urinary tract symptoms are present and this entity is known as female voiding dysfunction. To understand the female voiding dysfunction, look at this schematic diagram. There is a bladder in the center and there is a urethral tube. The bladder muscles generate at a time of voiding contraction force which is called detrusor contraction. 
and in some patients the abdominal straining augments the force of bladder contraction it supports the bladder contraction and both these forces are called as propulsive forces because they propel the urine out of the urinary bladder through the urethral tube so this is one part for the voiding to take place you need proper action of these propulsive forces then in the outlet you can either have a disease which is creating compression on the urethra you can or have a disease which is creating constriction in the urethra you can have a disease which is creating obturation of the urethral lumen which means blocking it from within or you can have a disease which is angulating or kinking the urethra right so these are four mechanisms by which the urethral tube in a female can get obstructed the in other patients at the ends of the urethra there are sphincters towards the bladder your bladder neck internal sphincter and towards the outlet your external sphincter the both these sphincters can have discoordination which means not opening properly at the time of voiding and thus creating obstruction to the bladder outflow so friends the first four compression constriction angulation obturation create a mechanical obstruction to urinary bladder and we call this as structural bladder outflow obstruction but the discoordination at bladder neck or discoordination at external sphincter is known as functional bladder outflow obstruction and both these entities structural and functional are called as passive obstruction so to if you understand the pathogenesis of the voiding symptoms you should know that there may either be a fault in the contractile force or a fault in the passage or in some patients a combination of both which will result into obstructive voiding in a female the term voiding dysfunction as international continent society defines female voiding dysfunction as abnormally slow and or incomplete micturition based on abnormally slow urine flow rates and abnormally high post void residuals ideally on repeated measurement of the phenomena and each repeat measurement should reconfirm the first observation this is very very vital for making a diagnosis it is not a one time test twice thrice you have to repeat the test to arrive at a diagnosis the ics said that any female during the urophotometry test if she has a q max less than 50 ml per second along with post void residual urinary volume more than 150 cc and both together then she qualifies to be labeled as female voiding dysfunction and this can happen either because of an obstructive disease the female bladder outlet obstruction or due to underactive bladder or in some patients a combination of both mixed which is also common in clinical practice in the female bladder outflow obstruction the majority of patients and this is contrary to popular belief majority of patients have functional bladder outflow obstruction this is far more common than structural bladder outflow obstruction and this can happen either because of poor relaxation of the external sphincter and when this happens this is labeled as dysfunctional voiding or some patients can have primary bladder neck obstruction non relaxation of bladder neck and both these entities are grouped as functional bladder outflow obstruction the other category is structural bladder outflow obstruction and i just said a little while ago that you can either have a constriction in the urethral lumen the common example is urethral stricture or you can have an obturation the blockade of the lumen of urethra from inside the common examples are stones a prolapsing urethral seal in a child or a prolapsing tumor mass from the bladder neck or you can have a compression of urethra and common example is a variety of paraurethral disorders masses which can compress urethra from outside or you can have an angulation of urethra which is which is commonly seen following an overtight slings 
done for stress urinary incontinence so friends i hope you understood the the actual pathological basis of the female bladder outflow obstruction and female obstructive low urinary tract symptoms in case you have any questions you can ask me on my email and in next video we'll continue this topic thank you very much